Hi guys, my name is Malarku. Welcome to Made Enthusiast, the channel where you can find lots of detailed medical videos. So please subscribe right now and hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of the videos that we make. So in our today's session, we are going to see the embryology of the urinary system in general. So these are our contents. In part one, which will be uh, covered in this video, we will try to look at the introduction of the urinary system and the development of the kidney and the ureter and the ascent of the kidney. We will know what ascent of the kidney means when we get there. And finally, we will see some changes in the blood supply of the kidney. But in part two, which is not included in this video, we will make another part two video for this part. So part two will include the development of the urinary, the urinary bladder and the development of the urethra. And eventually we will try to look at the, some anomalies of the kidneys. So let's begin our today's session. When we see the introduction, we can find the urogenital system. During the early development, the urinary system and the genital system are actually very, very closely related and associated. Not only developmentally, they are also anatomically very associated with one another. For example, if we look at the ureter. It is used for both the urine and the, the semen pathway. It is used for both purposes. So the urinary system and the genital system are related both anatomically and developmentally. So the urogenital system develops from the intermediate mesoderm. Yeah, as you know, before the embryonic tissue are made of three germinal layers. The outer part is the ectoderm, the middle part is the mesoderm, and the most inner part is the endoderm. So the mesoderm in turn divide into three parts. Okay, the first part is the paraxial part. Para means adjacent, axial means neural tube. Neural tube is going to develop around here, so it is adjacent to the neural tube. We call it the paraxial mesoderm on both sides. And next to the paraxial mesoderm, we can find the intermediate mesoderm. It is the intermediate mesoderm. Then next to the intermediate mesoderm, we can find the lateral mesoderm. So the urogenital system arises from the intermediate mesoderm. When we see the development of the urinary system, even if they arise simultaneously from the same tissue, the urinary system is the one that begins to develop before the genital system. So in the mesoderm, a longitudinal elevation starts to form, and we call this a longitudinal uh, elevation the urogenital ridge. So this urogenital ridge is formed on each side of the dorsal aorta. If you see this picture, here are the two dorsal aortas, and the urogenital ridge is formed in the intermediate mesoderm on both sides of the uh, dorsal aorta. Here is the intermediate mesoderm and the longitudinal elevation started to form in the intermediate mesoderm. And we call that the urogenital ridge. The urogenital ridge has actually two parts, the nephrogenic cord and the gonadal ridge. The nephrogenic cord is the lateral part of the urogenital ridge and it is the one that gives rise to the urinary system. Whereas the gonadal ridge is the medial part of the urogenital ridge and it is the part that gives rise to the genital system. So if we section this embryo right here around the neck region, this is what we can find. 
So this hull is the urogenital ridge and the urogenital ridge has two parts the nephrogenic cord which is the lateral part of the urogenital ridge so here are the nephrogenic cord and here the nephrogenic cord is the lateral part of the urogenital ridge whereas the gonadal ridge is the medial part of the urogenital ridge here is the gonadal ridge on both sides on this side and on this side these are the medial part of the urogenital ridge which are the gonadal ridge and these are the lateral part of the urogenital ridge on both sides and we call them the nephrogenic cord the, so these are the areas where the kidneys and the ureter develops actually so when we see the development of kidney and the ureter, there are three sets of kidney in human embryos. Before the permanent kidney develops, three sets of kidney develops. The first sets of kidney are called the pronephroi. The pronephroi are they are bilateral and they don't have any function and they are there for a time being. They don't persist. They let they soon degenerate, and they are never functional. They have no any function. They are represented only by a few cell clusters and the tubal structure called the pronephric duct. So these two structures are the one that represented the pronephroi. Okay, and these two structures are found in the neck region. Not in the abdomen, not in the pelvis, they are found in the neck region. Okay, so the pronephroi is represented by a few cell clusters and the pronephric duct uh, in the neck region. So, when we see the pronephric duct, it runs caudally on opening to the cloaca. As you might see in this picture, here are the pronephroi. Okay. They, degen they degenerate soon, but some part of the pronephroi persists, which is the pronephric that persists and it will be used by the second set of kidneys. We will see the second set of kidneys soon. So here is the, the pronephroi and here are the pronephric duct. The pronephric duct runs caudally and it opens into the cloaca. The cloaca is the caudal end of the hind gut, which is the dilated part of the hind gut. The caudal dilated end of the hind gut is called the cloaca. So the pronephroi, the pronephric duct, one is caudally from the pronephroi, it's one is caudally and it opens into the cloaca. So the pronephroi it will degenerate as you can see it will degenerate but the pronephric duct persists and it will be used by the second set of kidneys. The second set of kidneys are the mesonephroi. So the mesonephroi starts to develop late in the fourth week just below or be uh, caudal to the degenerated pronephroi so it is well developed it is large and it functions briefly for about four weeks it is starts to develop late in the fourth week and it serves as an entering kidney for about four weeks up to eight weeks so it serves up to eight weeks and uh, the mesonephric kidney consists of glomeruli and mesonephric tubules. As you can see from this picture, here is the mesonephroi. Here is the mesonephroi. It has glomeruli, uh, about 14 glomeruli actually. The mesonephroi has about 14 glomeruli and the mesonephric tubule. The mesonephric tubule are this one. The one that connects the glomeruli with the mesonephric duct. The mesonephric duct is 
the remnant of the pronephric duct okay now it is called mesonephric duct it used to be called pronephric duct during the pronephroy now its name changed into the mesonephric duct so the mesonephroy has glomeruli and the mesonephric tubule the mesonephric tubule connects the glomeruli with the mesonephric duct so the mesonephric tubule open into bilateral mesonephric duct as we have seen and the mesonephroid degenerates toward, toward the end of the first trimester but their this tubule will be uh, uh, used to form different structure for instance it is to form the efferent ductules of the testes but the mesonephric duct have several adult derivatives you can see that you can refer to that it has many uh, derivatives male adult derivative in, in female it degenerates so the third set of kidneys are the metaniphoi so these are the ones that become the permanent kidneys or the definitive kidneys they begin to develop in the fifth week and they start to function in the ninth week so they start to form urine in the ninth week but they start to develop early in the fifth week so the urine formed uh, by the embryo will go into the amniotic fluid the permanent kidney actually developed from two sources the metanephric diverticulum and the metanephrogenic blastema as you can see here here is the metanephric diverticulum this is the metanephric diverticulum and that this is the metanephric or the metanephrogenic blastema so the permanent kidney is formed from these two sources the metanephrogenic blastema and the metanephric diverticulum or we can call this the ureteric bed so ureteric bed is an outgrowth or an invagination of the mesonephric duct this is the mesonephric duct it is the diverticulum of the ureteric bed is an invagination or an outgrowth of the mesonephric duct just near its entrance into the cloaca but the metanephrogenic blastema is derived from the caudal part of the nephrogenic cord so they are developed from two sources when we see the differentiation of the metanephric diverticulum metanephric diverticulum is this structure okay or we can call this the ureteric but as the metanephric diverticulum elongates it penetrates it elongates and it penetrates the metanephrogenic blastema so the cranial portion of the diverticulum undergoes multiple branching it undergoes a repetitive and multiple branching the cranial part of the ureteric bed or the um, uh, diverti uh, the metanephric diverticulum so the first four generation of branches of the ureteric bed or the metanephric diverticulum gives rise to the major calyces the first four generations of the tubules so the branches give rise to the major calyces whereas the second four generation uh, give rise to the minor calyces and the terminal branch of the uh, cranial portion of the diverticulum or the ureteric but gives rise to the collecting tubules and now when we see the caudal portion the caudal portion or the stack this is the caudal portion of the ureteric bed or the metanephric diverticulum and it gives rise to the ureter so at this point we know that the major calyces the minor calyces and also the collecting tubules plus the renal pelvis or arise from this cranial portion of the cranial portion of the ureteric bed 